Zhang Henshui's Golden Pink Family Chapter 21 Ai Hao Hang relies on people to escape as a bird, and they don't realize the love scene together to watch idle flowers. When Pai Feng entered the door, he saw Feng Zhu holding a cigar in his mouth and pacing back and forth in the room with his hands behind his back. His face changed drastically. Seeing him like this, Pai Feng suspected that something bad happened to him, but she was afraid that the problem was her own, so she didn't dare to ask first and just pretended that she didn't know. Zi went back to his room to get the money, and when he came out, Feng Zhu was still pacing back and forth in the middle room. Pai Feng thought, if you don't say anything, I won't say anything either. What do you think? Open the bamboo curtain and walk outside. Feng Zhu shouted, come back, I have a word with you. Pai Feng turned around and came in. Feng Zhu sneered with a straight face. I said Zhao Lian can't let her go outside. What kind of social activities do you always say? It doesn't matter. What's going on now? Isn't it a joke? Pai Feng was shocked when he heard this, and asked, What's the matter? Feng Zhu sneered. Are you making a fuss? Look at the letter on the table. Pai Feng picked it up and saw that it was addressed to Mrs. Zhang of the Jin Mansion, but it didn't say where it was sent. Pai Feng said, This is a letter from Mother Zhang. What does it have to do with Zhao Lian? Feng Zhu said, Don't just read the letter. Look at what's written in the letter. What a joke. Pai Feng picked up the envelope and opened it. There was another envelope inside which was written to be handed over to Miss Zhao Lian for closing. When Pai Feng saw it, her heart skipped a beat. Without saying anything, she opened the envelope and read the letter inside. It was an eight-line letter, with only a few words written in plain language. What is written is, Sister Zhao Lian, I haven't seen you for many days, and I miss you very much. I have nothing to do at home, I am very bored. I really want to invite you to Central Park for a chat. I don't know when you have time. Please reply to me a letter. Thousands and thousands. Yuji Chun Chang's Han Pifeng also knew that the letter had no surname or address, which was very strange, but she didn't want to make a big deal out of it, so she threw the letter on the table with a smile and said, you're like a ghost, what's the matter with this? She is a maid in your family. Is it not allowed to communicate with the sisters? Feng Ju said, do you know who this Chun Chang is? She knows such a person. Pei Feng said, how come this person is not Mrs. Kiwa's maid? She and I often go to Kiwa's house and they know each other. Where did you find this letter? Did you make a fuss out of nowhere? Feng Zhu said, the concierge didn't know that Mahjong had asked for leave, so he sent this letter in. There was no stamp on the letter, and it seemed to be sent by someone specially. It didn't look like a letter from these people. I took it, and it was hard, and it turned out that there was a letter inside. Moreover, the letter smelled very good in my hand, and it was even more uncharacteristic of me. Usually there is. The more I read, the more suspicious I became, so I opened the letter and read it. Do you think I was wrong? Pai Feng said, maybe someone from Kiwa's house brought it here. You know, as for having a pink scent, it doesn't matter. Which girl doesn't have a bit of pink on her letter paper? But then again, even if it is, Zhao Lian has something secret. The child is mine. If I don't care about it, she can be free. It doesn't seem like your uncle has to worry about it in vain. Feng Ju never expected that his wife would say such a thing. A plaintiff with solid evidence has become a defendant who makes a lot of trouble out of nothing. He sneered and said, you always protect her, thinking that I have any bad intentions. Okay, I won't care from now on, just let you do it. After saying that, he let go and walked out. Pai Feng stood in the room in a daze, with the letter in her hand, unable to tell what happened for a long time. When I looked back at the room, it was quiet so I called out twice. There was no movement in Zhao Lian's room, and she didn't hear her answer. Pai Feng walked to Zhao Lian's house to see if she was at home. When he lifted the curtain, he saw her sleeping on the rattan couch with a bunch of hair. Pai Feng came in, but she didn't get up. Pai Feng sneered and said, you are so brave, you actually started to write letters to people. Let me ask you, who is writing this letter? Zhao Lian was lying on the leaky pillow of the rattan couch but he just refused to raise his head, which is good. As if crying, Pai Feng said, tell me who is this? I have known for a long time that you are not a peaceful person. Didn't I tell you? What do you want to do? You are so serious, as if you want to follow me for the rest of your life. As he spoke, he threw the letter at Zhao Lian and said with a kick, look, what are you talking about? 
You clearly recognize this person and ask someone to tell me that I am not disobedient. Now that you have done such a sneaky thing, where do people think our house is? Hey, I'm so angry. Even though Pai Fang was angry, Zhao Lian remained silent. Pai Fang said, Why are you silent? Is this letter wrongly accusing you? Did you hear it? Your uncle lost his temper when he saw this letter. I always cover it up for you so that he doesn't know anything about it. You are covering up all the traces and not saying a word to me. You really have no conscience at all. Pai Feng said this, which made Zhao Lian's words come out. She said, I'm very grateful for what the young lady means to me, but I didn't do anything bad. Don't be suspicious. Pai Feng picked up the letter again and put it directly in Zhao Lian's face. He asked, you said you didn't do anything bad. Did this fall from the sky? Zhao Lian read the letter and remained silent. She just shed tears and sat on the head of the rattan couch with her head down. Pai Fang said, You have nothing to say. Just tell me, who is the person who wrote the letter? As long as there is nothing missing, I might be able to help you with this. As the saying goes, no woman can be left behind in college. You even my daughter, if you have an affair, I can't help you, not to mention that you have a foreign surname. How can I keep you? But you have to tell me, who is this person? Man, that must not be a good thing. Not only will I not obey you, I will also chase this person out and punish him for seducing him. Who is it? What kind of malice was there? He had to lower his head and say three words softly. His surname is Liu. Pai Feng said. What? His surname is Liu? Where did such a person come from? Where does he live? What does he do? Zhao Lian said. The fifth and sixth ladies all know him. The young lady will know it as soon as she asks them. Pai Feng wanted to ask more questions but Yan Shi said, What's the matter? As soon as the sister-in-law took the money, there was no trace of it. Come. Will you come or not? I'm so anxious to wait. Pai Feng had already arrived under the eaves when she heard Yan Shi's voice. In the blink of an eye, he saw another person's shadow flickering on the glass window. He quickly smiled and said, I have a little something to do. I'll be here in a moment. You go and clean up the scene first. The scene is set. And I'm here too. Yan Shi said through the window. Everything is set up, just waiting for you. Pai Feng said, tell them first, and I'll be there. Yang Xi said, come if you want. With that, Yang Xi had already left. Pai Feng opened a window screen and saw that Yan Shi had gone far away, and then said to Zhao Lian, at this time, they want to take me to play cards. I want to hide it from them, so I have to go and perfunctory. After playing cards, I will come back and play with you. You settle the account. After saying that, he picked up his money bag and turned around to come to Yufen. Seeing the three of them, they had all sat down, sorted out their cards, and were waiting quietly. Yufen smiled and said, It's really hard to invite your boss. Why did you go there for so long? Pai Fang said, Suddenly I remembered that I had something to do, so I came here after I finished it. No one could guess what happened to Pai Fang. What's going on? So everyone didn't pay attention to her words and played cards with peace of mind. Following Pai Feng, after four rounds, it was time to stop. But Xu Zhu refused again and again, and fought eight times. After eight laps, it was still only nine o'clock. Yufen wants to fight for more times, no matter how hard she refuses. Pai Feng had no choice but to fight for more times. When the game lasted ten rounds, Feng Zhu came in shouting, Why don't you go and have a look? Zhao Lian ran away. After hearing this, everyone was startled. Pai Feng understood in her heart, and her expression changed. She quickly stood up and asked, How did you know that Zhao Lian ran away? Feng Zhu said, I went in outside just now. The room was dark, and there was no one. I turned on the light, and there was a letter left by Zhao Lian on the table. Look at this letter. Zhao Lian cried and spoke while reading the letter. Pai Feng's expression changed moment by moment. Later, she shed tears unconsciously. Yufen said, How is it? Is this child really gone? Pai Feng threw the letter on the table, and said, Look at this letter. Yufen unfolded the letter and everyone gathered around to read it. Everyone took turns to read the letter, and they were all surprised. Especially Yan Shi, as if she had been stimulated by something, had a strange feeling. Yufen said, She said in this letter that Sixth Sister knew about her marriage. She invited Sixth Sister here to ask who she ran away with. When the troubled mother heard this, she no one had to pay for it. So Runzi had already been invited. Runzi smiled and said, Zhao Lian is really gone? 
I admire her very much for her perseverance and her ability to practice free love. Yufen said, you still said, she said, you know everything about this, take a look at this letter. With that said, he handed the letter to Runzi to read. Runzi said, no need to look, I know that she left with Liu Chunjiang. But can that Liu Chunjiang always cherish her? I don't dare to take it safe. Lao Qi should recognize this person, you think they will get it. What kind of situation? Yan Shi said, I recognize this person, and he is also a very beautiful character. I can't believe that he is marrying Zhao Lian, or it's not him, right? Runzi said, Zhao Lian has a very high vision. If he doesn't run away, that's all. If he runs away, the surname Liu will never be irrelevant. So he briefly told the story of Zhao Lian and Liu Chunjiang's acquaintance. Feng Ju stomped his feet and said, that's right. The person who sent the letter that was handed over to Zhao Lian by Zhang Ma didn't call himself Chunjiang? Chunjiang Chunjiang. The voice is very similar. I think it must be this boy. We can be there soon. He wants someone in his family. Pai Feng said, Why are you so angry? She belongs to me, and I want her to leave. What evidence do you have to ask Yi Jing like this? Deeper, you went to someone else's house, you didn't speak well, and you were beaten carefully. Feng Ju said, If you are willing to let her go, what else can you do if you don't find her tonight? She's gone far away, but there's no way to find her. Pai Feng was silent for a while, then Sidon said, I'm a good person, let her go. If she is fooled by others, you can't blame me. Run Ji Dao, my sister-in-law is right in her opinion. Once this incident broke out, a rumor spread, which was not very pleasant. Secondly, since she made up her mind and followed the man named Liu, her opinion will not change. Even if we forcefully bring her back, it would be even worse if she becomes embarrassed and commits suicide. Yufin said, Although we don't have to find her, we still have to find out whether her surname is Liu. Isn't it convenient? Pai Feng said, can't we just send someone to Liu's house to ask? Is the person named Liu still at home? If I can't find out after several times, he must have left. Pai Feng sat silently. Everyone knew that she had serious feelings in her heart, so they only comforted her with some discerning words and no longer said that Zhao Lian was wrong. Pai Feng stopped playing cards and went back to her room listlessly. Feng Ju, however, kept nagging and complaining about her. Pai Feng said, Don't be confused. You think Zhao Lian ran away and you are broken in love. I dare to say for sure that she never takes you seriously. She left. And you eat this in front of me. What's the point of being jealous? You're already gone. So it's not a big deal for you to be so generous. People might say you're humane. Now that you can't come back and look so lost and unconvinced, it's nothing to make people laugh. I guess it's not necessary. These words were exactly what Fengju was doing. He was lying on the rattan couch in the room outside, and let out a long sigh. Pai Feng said through the wall fan, What are you sighing for? Everyone has his own fate, and you can't force it. Go to sleep. Don't be angry. You should stay with your yellow-faced woman. After that, chuckled and patted the wall fan twice more. Fengju then went to sleep quietly. The next day, Pai Feng told Wang Gu in the hall. Mrs. Jin looked very casual when she saw Pai Feng, so she couldn't hold her accountable. But Fengju couldn't get rid of it, and he always felt like there was a knot in his heart. He turned around and thought about it. What his wife said last night, everyone has his own fate, actually made some sense. Over the years, I have never cursed Zhao Lian, and I always pity her in my heart. Unexpectedly, she was not tempted at all, but she made a lifelong promise with a man named Liu after only a few meetings. From this point of view, if a man does not like a woman, it will be in vain to give her his heart. With this thought in my mind, I was unhappy all day long. That day at the government office, everyone was chatting in the office, and they happened to talk about the issue of affection for prostitutes. His colleague Zhu Yishi said, People are not wood or stone, who can be emotionless. Since prostitutes are also human beings, they naturally have affection. For example, if you give money to a beggar again and again, he will remember you. We spend money on prostitutes and get along with them, won't she show some affection to us? Feng Ju smiled and shook his hands. He said, oh no, oh no, if you think about prostitutes like you do, then you will send all the money spenders into the fire pit. What prostitutes sacrifice is their looks, and what they sell is love. You love her for her looks, but she thinks it is a sacrifice. If you love her because she acts sweetly on the surface, as if she loves you, 
How can you know that she is selling this love? Zhu Yishi said, According to what you said, prostitutes are actually emotionless animals. Feng Ju said, Of course they also have love, but the person she loves is not necessarily the customer who spends money. I after various tests, I know that a woman's love cannot be bought with money. Even if you buy it with money, it is just a superficial social interaction, not true love. One day, she will no longer need your money, and once her true love arises, she will let you go. Another colleague next to him, named Li Wyron, continued, Brother Feng Ju, since you have gone through various tests to know that the love of a prostitute is like this, so, can you tell me about the process of this test? As he said this, he crossed his left leg over his right leg, tilted his body, and looked at Feng Ju with a silly smile. Feng Ju smiled and said, What is there to talk about? Anyone who has spent a bet of money in the alley should know this. Why do I need to tell you about it? Even you to should know something without pretending to be stupid, right? Zhu Yishi smiled and said, I haven't been out for a long time with brother Feng Ju. Can you take me out for a walk and see my friends? Feng Ju said, Going out together is fine, but as for friends, there is no one. I just found a place to sit in the alley occasionally because I am entertaining friends. Today I go to this place. Tomorrow I go to that place. I am too proud to go anymore. Where are the acquaintances? Li Wei Ran smiled and said, Brother Feng Ju, what you said is true. Because the power of the emperor is so great, the family rules are very strict. Zhu Yishi smiled and said, Really? If I were Brother Feng Ju, I would definitely give a counter evidence to show that I am not afraid of the family rules. Feng Ju said, After all the talk, you two just want me to treat a small host of yours. It's not a big deal. If you want me to treat, then I should treat. Why beat around the bush and talk in so many roundabout ways? Zhu Yishi said, In that case, Brother Feng Ju is very willing to treat you. The opportunity cannot be missed. If you want to treat, it's today. Feng Ju smiled and said, I have been very bored these days. I would like to go out. Let's go for a walk. Tonight is tonight, but shall we go to the south or the north? Zhu Yishi said with a smile, I know to many people in the southern team. I bump into them everywhere. I'd rather go to the north. Feng Ju pointed at him and said with a smile, Listen, this is what you are admitting. Zhu Yishi said with a smile, I didn't say I didn't want to go for a walk. What's there to admit? Even brother Wei Ran and I feel the same way. Li Wei Ran said with a smile, I don't dare to approach you. I don't have the qualifications. Feng Ju said, It's southern snacks. If you get tired of going for a walk, it's good to change your taste. I've been thinking about it for a long time. Let's go to every household to eat. See how many good ones there are. Zhu Yishi said, How can that be? If you sit in each store for 10 minutes, you can only visit 6 stores in an hour. In addition, you have to walk in the aisles and call the roll. What's the fun of just rushing through the stores? Liu Wyron said, I have a way. If you can sit in a place, you can sit for a while longer. If you can't sit in a place, you can just throw money and leave. Feng Ju said, I think if you don't want to go shopping, don't go shopping. If you want to go shopping, you can go shopping to your heart's content. It doesn't matter if you go to every store, but you will just come back a little later. Zhu and Liu saw Feng Ju's enthusiasm and thought that he was the one who made the decision. They agreed happily. They agreed with him and agreed that they didn't have to go home after leaving the government office. They went straight out of the South City and had dinner at a small restaurant. After dinner, the lights on the street were already bright. Zhu and Liu both took Feng Ju's car. At this time, Feng Ju asked the car to go home. The three of them walked slowly into the alley with smiles. Zhu Yishi asked, Brother Feng Ju, which house shall we go to first? Feng Ju said, We will go to every house anyway, no matter which one we start with, as long as it is from the north, we will go in. As he spoke, he saw a few small glass plaques with red silk embroidered characters hanging on the door of a house. The characters on one of them were Zhao Jinkui and Yu Jinxi. Feng Ju frowned and said, Vulgar. This northern rouge let alone anything else, just the name, is not as good as the one in the south. Liu Wyron said, What do you think? Are you going to regret it before you even get to one of the houses? Feng Ju smiled and said, Criticism is criticism, and strolling is strolling. I came here to explore the wonders, so there is no reason to regret it. As he spoke, Zhu Yishi walked quickly and stepped into the door. Feng Ju smiled and said, Why are you in such a hurry? Are you going in to grab the first prize? 
As he said that, he followed Lee Wyernan. After entering a screen door, a turtle slave in black clothes came forward with a happy face. You? There is no room. If you have any acquaintances, please let me know. Feng Zhu frowned and said to Zhu and Liu, It's disappointing. The first one will be turned away. Then he said to the eunuch, There is no room, and no one is available. The eunuch was puzzled by Feng Zhu's words, and looked at Feng Zhu with his eyes rolled up. Zhu Yishi said, He is asking if there are any girls here who are free. The eunuch said, There are two free. Zhu Yishi said, That's fine, call them out and let me see them. The eunuch didn't know what they meant, so he had to call the two girls to the yard. When Feng Zhu opened his eyes, one of them was about 20 years old, with a Rui hair hanging behind her head, and a lot of rouge and powder on her face. She was wearing a bean green Qiang Sam, but she had a pair of 3-inch golden lotus feet. Under the Qiang Sam, bright red silk socks and green satin pointed shoes were exposed, which was particularly stimulating. She walked forward first, twisting and turning, and the eunuch introduced her name, Yu Feng. She was honest and unceremonious. She stared at the three people and said softly, they seem to be friends. Zhu Yishi also said softly to Li Wairan, she can also be called Feng, it's really a disgrace to her good name. As she was talking, she heard someone calling her godmother in a delicate voice, and a girl came out with it. She was about 15 or 16 years old. She wore a red satin tight-fitting top with a front opening, and green trousers with wide feet. She had a braid with a huge red knot inserted in it. Although she was not a top-notch talent, she had a little rouge on her cheeks, which made her look a little cute and naive. She walked forward with a pair of high heels, squeaking. When the turtle slave saw her coming forward, he sang her name for her, Wang Xiang. Feng Zhu smiled and said, This name is quite suitable. Li Wairan smiled and said, Brother Feng Zhu seems to be sympathetic to me, so it must be her. Wang Xiang saw that they were somewhat willing, and asked Li Wairan, Which master is it? Zhu Yishi pointed at Feng Zhu and said, You should call him, but don't call him master. He is the eldest son of Prime Minister Jin. He doesn't like anything else but being called young master. If you call him young master, it will be better than giving him thick rice soup. This child is also a smart person. People often hear that the Prime Minister is the head of the General Director. He is the eldest son of the Prime Minister, so he is naturally a playboy. Then he smiled and said, I know that Southerners call Du Xiao, which is the most face-saving. Then, I will call Du Xiao. Jin Du Xiao, please don't be offended. After that, he shook Feng Zhu's hand and said, I'm really sorry, please wait a moment, I'll ask them to vacate the room, my room is occupied by other guests. This Wang Xiang was a girl who had just started doing business for a long time and was not famous. Because her room was empty, when another girl had a guest, she would bring him to her room to sit. Now that Wang Xiang had a guest herself, she would naturally find a way to give up her room. Moreover, the eunuch madam saw that this person had extraordinary behavior, and had expected that he was not an ordinary person. Now that she heard that he was the prime minister's son, she had to flatter him even more. After a while, the room was given up. Wang Xiang took Feng Zhu's hand and led him into a small wing room on the east side. There was only a wooden bed, a wooden table and chairs, a small glass cabinet, another set of white lacquered tables and chairs, and even no sofa in the room. Wang Xiang blushed and said, The room is really small, please be more tolerant. Feng Zhu smiled and said, It doesn't matter, we are here to see people, not to see the house. What does the size of the house matter? At this time, Wang Xing's mother and Wang Xing's madam, Aunt Li, were busy going in and out, making towels, making tea, and serving melon seeds. Aunt Li was originally a prostitute. Because I was short of money recently and couldn't afford to spend much, I only spent a few hundred yuan to get Wang Xiang to try it out. I've been doing business for almost a month, but I can only cook two or three dishes a day. How can I survive with the three or four yuan of plate money? So I was thinking day and night, trying to come up with a way to cheer myself up. Now suddenly the god of wealth came. How could I let him go easily? When I lifted the curtain at the door of the room, I gave Wang Xiang a look. Wang Xiang understood and walked out. Aunt Li took her aside and said softly, just now there was a group of guests in the room, and they recognized this guy named Jin. He said that this is really the Prime Minister's son. You should accompany him well, and don't let him come once and for all. Whether you can become famous or not depends on this person, so don't miss the opportunity. Aunt Lee said, 
and Wang Xiang hummed an agreement. After that, they made a plan and acted. All right, this part of the story ends here. Want to know what happened next? Let's listen to the breakdown next time.